Welcome to Cooking School. Today's show is all about one-pot meals. Not only can one-pot meals be extremely flavorful, they're fuss-free and a cinch to clean up. Using just one pot, I'll teach you how to steam, saute, poach, and braise your way to four tasty home-cooked dinners. A stock pot is the perfect choice for steaming a simple stovetop clam bake laden with fresh seafood, tender summer corn, and baby red potatoes. Next, I'll share a trick for making a rich and creamy shrimp and herb risotto in half the time using one of these, a pressure cooker. A saute pan like this one is ideal for mastering the technique of poaching cod fillets in a flavorful broth with tomatoes. And finally, the Dutch oven is just what you need for recipes that call for braising, such as arroz con pollo, a chicken and saffron infused rice dish studded with olives. And the best part, all these recipes take about an hour from start to finish. So get out those pots and start cooking. The native tribes of Massachusetts cooked seafood in sand pits lined with seaweed and hot stones for more than 2,000 years. Over the centuries, this practice evolved into the modern day clam bake at the beach. Today, I'm taking it one step further, simplifying it by cooking it indoors on the stove in one big pot. This method takes the guesswork out of cooking times and it's considerably easier than digging that great big pit in the sand. You just need a stock pot that's big enough to hold everything. Start with one and a quarter cup of white wine and a quarter of a cup of water. Bring that to a boil and add your aromatics, which consist of six cloves of garlic, two shallots peeled and cut into quarters, some red pepper flakes, very essential, and one and a half pounds of small red potatoes. Uh, if you can't find red, you can use the small white potatoes, but uh, they should be very tender potatoes. So that's the first step. While that is coming to a boil, make sure that all your clams, and we have five dozen little neck clams, make sure that they are clean, they're scrubbed, and that they've been soaked in some water uh, some people add a little bit of cornmeal to the water or a couple pieces of bread just to kind of clean out the sand from the interiors. But these are beautiful clams. Very, very nice. If the shell is broken or if the clam is ajar, don't use them. Now, we also have six ears of corn, one pound of extra jumbo shrimp, and two lemons cut into quarters. Okay, so this is boiling. Your garlic goes in your shallots, your potatoes. And this is a traditional lobster steamer pot. I use it for lobster or for actual canning. It, it also has a, a rack for jars and um, a half a teaspoon of the red pepper flakes. Now, this is boiling, cover and cook for eight minutes. That gets those potatoes started. So there, the first steaming is done. Add your clams, five dozen clams to the pot, right on top of the potatoes. Now the clams will exude a lot of moisture too, so you have plenty. And on top of the clams, the corn. So six ears of corn and we broke the ears in half. And get nice, sweet, fresh corn. This is the time to use the very, very best ingredients. And now while the corn and the clams are cooking, add two lemons cut into quarters. Cover this 10 to 12 minutes until the clams open. Now, when the clams start to open, and I see a few opening, you can see down here, it's opening plump and nice, add your shrimp. One pound of extra large jumbo shrimp with the shells intact. So put these right into the steaming pot and cover again, a couple minutes more, and then your clam bake is done. So you see it really takes no time at all. Once you assemble all the ingredients, it takes just uh, less than a half an hour to cook. So the shrimp are pink, and that's a good sign that they are done. The corn looks done. 
the clams are opened and let the fun begin, the eating. So you can just remove all the shrimp and place them on your tray. I love using this big enamel tray. It's so perfect for clam bakes or lobster roasts. And the corn. Mm. And I can't wait to see the potatoes. They are completely buried under the clams. And work quickly so that you get this clam bake hot to the table. But this can be done right on a terrace, on a patio, in a backyard. You don't have to be on the beach for such a fantastic treat. And then for the clams, I like to use a strainer like this. Mm, they are perfect. Mm, and the clams are plump, really pretty. And our lovely potatoes. Now all this broth that's in the pot is going to go right here also. And now strain the broth in a sieve. And use a fine sieve because if there is any sand in your clams, it will be gone. You pour this into a nice decorative serving pot. This is a dipping sauce for everything. Use four tablespoons of butter. Some parsley, about a half a cup of chopped parsley. And some chopped oregano. Stir that up. And put that right over with your lemons and your seafood. It's sure to impress the guests at your next gathering. Everything you need for a really great stovetop clam bake. Make sure you have these nice little cheesecloth wrapped lemons to squeeze over your clams. And how about some Chardonnay? Enjoy. How many of you actually have a pressure cooker? Many of you probably have pressure cookers hidden away in the closet, and you remember your mom using them all the time, but then they kind of fell out of uh, favor. Well, now take out that pressure cooker. It can save you so much time. For example, did you ever think you could make a rich, creamy risotto with shrimp and herbs without all the stirring, without that 18 minutes of not leaving the stove? Well, you can. The secret lies in this particular kind of pot. These amazing pots cut cooking time drastically and are generally best for dishes that have long cooking times such as meat, beans, root vegetables, and hearty greens like rice. So we're gonna make this fabulous risotto and change your life. You use two tablespoons of butter. And basically the ingredients are pretty much the same as for a traditional stovetop risotto. Add two cloves of garlic finely minced and one onion, finely minced also. Now, to get rid of that acridness in the onion, this is a little hint, a little tip that you should take away from this program. You can just soak the onion in a strainer like this in iced water, just for a few minutes. Uh, it takes away all that acridness and it smells like perfect onion. This is a good thing for delicate dishes. So I'm gonna add the onion. Mm. Smells so good. Pressure cookers are made out of a really heavy duty material. And uh, every pressure cooker maker makes a slightly different version of this incredible pot. And now add uh, one and a half cups of arborio rice. Should be, if you're making risotto, arborio. That's an Italian short grain rice that will turn white with the heat. It's kind of translucent to start and it gets white and opaque as it heats up. Sauteing the rice like this, making it white instead of translucent, seals in the flavor, uh, keeps the rice from getting sticky. And even though this is a sticky rice, it prevents the grains from really becoming one mass. It's the individual. So this is good. And now add two tablespoons of white wine and three cups of chicken broth. 
how you can add it all at once. Now this is going to start cooking right away. Get all of the rice down into the liquid. Season with a little bit of salt, big pinch, and some freshly ground black pepper. Cover like this. Make sure it is tightly sealed. And on this particular pressure cooker, you just press that up to there. Now, as soon as that little yellow marker pops up, set your timer for nine minutes. That's the cooking time. There may be a little bit more after we open the pressure cooker, but uh, nine minutes makes a very good risotto. Just popped up, set your timer. So here you can see the steam. Now everything's cooking nicely. In another pot, have a half a cup of chicken broth heating. This is to add uh, when you add the shrimp. And we have beautiful shrimp. When buying fresh shrimp, make sure that the bodies are firm. Avoid shrimp that are soft and sticky, whose bodies have become detached from their shells, that smell of anything other than just a little bit of the sea. So we have one pound of medium shrimp, three quarters of a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of butter, and some lovely flat leaf parsley chopped. So all of this is ready to finish off our risotto. There's our timer. Okay, so it's been steaming for nine minutes. Turn off your heat. Then turn this to release. <laughs> now that's releasing the pressure, the steam pressure inside the pot. Don't try to open the pot until that stops hissing. And the little yellow indicator is back down. This pot is locked shut until the pressure is released. So even if you try to open it, you'll have a hard time. There, and the button fell down. Now you pull this down like that, and you can open the pot. Mm, looks creamy and good. Now, add one and a half cups more broth. Add your shrimp, peeled and deveined. So now, keep your heat on medium high and evaporate the excess moisture. This is where you develop the creaminess of the risotto. Uh, as you cook the shrimp, you are also cooking the rice, and you are finishing the risotto. Mm, so beautiful. See how creamy it's getting? And it's off heat when you add your cheese and butter. I think we're at exactly the right creaminess, the right consistency. Now, turn the heat off, add your Parmesan cheese, three quarters of a cup. Stir that in, and your butter. Butter just adds that depth of flavor that is so essential in many, many dishes. That's it. And now spoon as much as you want into your plate. This risotto recipe makes four healthy servings. Oh, doesn't that look fantastic? And look how much time you saved. Pressure cooker is a real time saver in the kitchen, as you can see. Enjoy your risotto. Everyone loves a weeknight meal they can get on the table in very short order. This recipe for one pan poached cod with tomatoes combines fresh colorful vegetables, broth and basil, along with tender cod, all cooked together in the same saute pan. So choose a saute pan about this size and add three cups of chicken broth or vegetable broth some sprigs of basil, a half a pound of potatoes. I'm using these little Peruvian blue potatoes, sliced, oh, a little less than a quarter of an inch thick. These are very pretty and they cook very nicely. Some cherry tomatoes, one and a half cups, 
some red onion, about a half a medium red onion. What we're doing essentially is making a broth. A quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and two teaspoons of salt. Making a poaching broth, a fumé in French. Bring that to a boil, reduce to a simmer and cook for, oh, about six minutes. So we're using cod today, four ounce pieces of cod, which is a popular fish that can be found in cold, deep waters of the North Atlantic and the North Pacific. It was once the most plentiful fish, and now coming back from almost extinction, it's become very, very popular once again. The flaky flesh is mild and delicate, and salt and pepper your pieces, and then submerge them in your broth. Poaching is really best for tender cuts such as fish, poultry, certain cuts of pork and veal. Cover and poach on medium low heat. It takes about seven minutes. And so there, it's been just about seven minutes. Add, oh, four ounces or so of sliced sugar snaps and a half a cup more of cherry tomatoes, which will brighten up the poaching liquid, and some lemon. Lots of seeds in these lemons, so just like a tablespoon or so of fresh lemon juice. Just after a minute or so, the snap peas look bright green. The cherry tomatoes are pretty and bright. There's quite a bit of broth, so just spoon this into shallow soup plates. And with the vegetables, the colorful vegetables, all around. Healthy, fresh, really delicious. You might want to serve this with a wedge of lemon and a sprig or two of fresh basil. And that is, in a matter of minutes, a really delicious, healthy, excellent way to serve fish. Enjoy. Now this is one of my very, very favorite one pot meals. I'm using an enameled cast iron Dutch oven for making arroz con pollo. Variations on this chicken and rice dish are beloved throughout Spain and Latin America. This one's studded with green olives and infused with the heady flavors of wine, onion, garlic, bay leaves, and saffron. So salt and pepper chicken thighs, six bone in chicken thighs. Make sure the meat is dry, put skin side down, and a couple tablespoons of hot olive oil. I haven't salt and peppered the inside yet, which I will do. But we want to get the meat nice and brown. And starting with the skin side down is generally a good idea. The heaviness of the enamel cast iron and the tight fitting lid really makes it the perfect vehicle for braising this rice and chicken all together. So a little bit more salt. A little bit more pepper. And for the rest of the dish, you'll need some white wine, a half cup, some saffron, finely chopped garlic, finely chopped onions, chopped tomato, and we're using Valencia rice. It's Spanish rice as opposed to Italian arborio for risotto. I make this with eggplant in it, with uh, yellow and red peppers in it. It's a very, very tasty and versatile dish. While the chicken is browning, put a pinch of saffron into the half a cup of white wine. The saffron will color the wine and add a nice golden color to the dish. The chicken thighs are a very good choice for this particular dish because they have lots of flavor and they're very moist and you can cook them without the skin and they'll still be deliciously tender if you are um, on a diet and don't want any skin. Chicken breasts tend to dry out, and uh, I wouldn't suggest those for this dish, but chicken wings are very good. Now, people always ask, why bother browning the meat? Well, browning the chicken will certainly give it color and develop a rich flavor base in the pot. So browning is important. Let's see, oh, I, this is just right. A beautiful golden color, a little bit of crispy on the skin. Just what we want for our arroz con pollo. Now you can just remove these to a baking sheet. 
and it has rendered a little bit of fat, so uh, take all but two tablespoons of the fat out of the pan. It's not too much, but just a little bit. And you see there is a little bit of browning, and that's going to really help color your final dish. This is one large yellow onion. Chopped quite small. And uh, two tablespoons of garlic, finely minced. And you can scrape up those little bit of brown bits on the bottom. You don't want to burn anything, okay? So be careful. Reduce the heat if you must. And now add one large tomato, finely chopped. Skin and seeds are fine. This turns such a beautiful color. And now add your wine. Um, it's a half a cup of dry white wine, and look at the color it has turned with the addition of the saffron. So add that. Make sure every saffron thread is in your pot. And boil that until most of the liquid has evaporated. But the flavor, of course, has stayed. Add two bay leaves and some freshly ground black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And when it's still a little bit moist, add your rice. This is one and a half cups of Valencia rice. And this will start to cook immediately. It's a very short grained rice, much smaller in grain than the arborio rice. So now we're gonna add our three cups of chicken broth. If you don't have chicken broth, you can add vegetable broth, but since this is a chicken dish, chicken broth is totally appropriate. Stir this around, bring it to a simmer, add your olives, one cup of pimento stuffed olives. A very traditional addition. And your chicken, skin side up. Now the Valencia rice has a unique capacity to absorb large amounts of liquid. So it is the perfect rice to use for this particular dish. Mm, the chicken is so succulent already. There. And uh, there's a lot of juice in the pan, pour that into. Bring that to a boil, reduce to a simmer, transfer covered to a 375 degree oven. Now it's going to cook in the oven uh, for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. And when you take it out, let it stand for 10 minutes before serving. So this is ready to go. Cover. And that goes right into your oven. Set your timer, 25 minutes. So here's our casserole out of the oven. Would you like to see what it looks like? Unbelievably delicious. Olives, chicken, rice, tomatoes. Easy, healthy, good. Chicken and rice with a Spanish accent. Well, enjoy. And thank you all for joining me today. See you on the next episode of Cooking School. In a slow cooker, combine chopped onion, dried oregano, two dried bay leaves, one minced chipotle and adobe sauce, crushed tomatoes, and whole tomatoes in puree. Add a two and a half pound boneless pork shoulder that you've halved crosswise. Turn to coat and cover. Cook on high heat until very tender, about six hours. Shred the meat with two forks and mix with the sauce. Serve on rolls with coleslaw and pickles.